question is regards to uh, science. And, uh, you know, for, for me personally, I've kind of struggled with this a little bit in the sense that uh, I've seen like there's this approach of scientific miracles in the Quran and uh, trying to find these miracles. But at the same time, I have an understanding that science itself changes with time and it has different discoveries. For example, at one point, science used to say that the universe was eternal. And that was the scientific position. And now after the discovery of the Big Bang and Redshift, it became the, the scientific uh, what we call consensus is that there is a beginning to the universe. So how do, how do we score that as Muslims and how do we approach uh, like science itself, scientific truth in of itself? And should we take an instrumentalist ab- approach in the sense that, well, we have these bunch of theories that, you know, they have uses, but we, we don't believe in them being certainly true. Or should we uh, like take things that like scientific proofs as of, of having strong weight? Okay. So Jazakallah for your question. The first thing is I want to, um, I just want to make the, uh, a clarification here. Uh, the way that you described it, um, I think you made a false dichotomy between instrumentalism and proof. Okay, so the the two main thoughts, uh, schools of thought, uh, in terms of the philosophy of science when it comes to science, uh, so the, the claims of science is that of instrumentalism and that of realism. Now. It's not the case that instrumentalism says that science is not certain and that realism says that science is certain and gives you proof the way that you described it. Both of them uh, basically make claims about the unobservable world and uh, how much certainty we can have in regards to that. But you can be somebody who accepts that science doesn't give certainty and, and, and there's five main reasons for that and it's worth going into that. So we've got the problem of induction, underdetermination, problem of unconceived alternatives, theory ladenness and methodological naturalism. And on my channel, I've explained why five of these leads to science not giving you absolute certainty. However, you can be a realist and you can be an instrumentalist, but you can still subscribe to the idea that science doesn't give you certainty. Now, should Muslims be instrumentalists or realists uh, from that perspective? It doesn't matter. And I don't think it's correct. I mean, I myself am an instrumentalist, but you could be someone that's a realist. That's not actually an instrumentalist. You you could actually uh, believe that the way that science is speaking about the unobservable world, it is explaining uh, uh, the world the way it it is. It it does actually explain unobservables in that way. But you can still believe that science doesn't lead to certainty. But that doesn't matter. Um, The other question is about scientific miracles and the Quran. So when it comes to um, uh, the, the verses of the Quran, people relate them to scientific phenomena such as the universe expanding or Big Bang cosmology or uh, the shape of the earth or all these types of things. Um, and this is hugely problematic because you're making, uh, there's several problems and there's several layers within each problem. So the first thing is you're claiming that that verse only means the meaning that you've given it. Because if, for example, um, the verse in Surah Anbiya, which is referring to um, as the, the supposed uh, uh, the proponents of this would say, it's saying the universe is uh, expanding. If that verse could also mean that the universe is vast, which is what some of the uh, tafsir commentators actually said, then it takes away from the supposed miracle because it could mean both. It could mean it's vast or it could mean that it's expanding. And in the case of vast, it means that it could be implied that it's not expanding. So there's no miracle there. The second issue is, how do you know the science is not going to change? And the science can actually change. And scientists all the time, you you find the most bizarre type of U-turns in science. So uh, Hamza has a fantastic paper, which you can get on the Sapiens website. You can get, um, uh, what's it called, on HamzaSources.com as well, about science and why we shouldn't actually use the Quranic miracles. And uh, the Quranic miracles narrative is not only incoherent from the philosophy of science perspective, but it's also incoherent from a Islamic classical understanding of the pseudo sciences. How do we actually come to, um, you know, the conclusions that this verse means this and it and in trying to eliminate other possible meanings? For example, just on that verse, which I mentioned uh, previously about uh, the supposed universe expanding, they are at least 17 explanations of that verse that we have. And the majority of them that we find uh, from, actually, no, before I complete this point, I don't remember this point exactly, but what we find is that there's differences of opinion amongst the classical uh, tafsir scholars about the meaning of that verse in terms of whether it means expansion or, or it means a vastness. So we need to be very uh, careful here. 
a lot of the a lot of the um this all the, the 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 heaven we have created with power and we are musiaun so some have translated as we're expanding it it's yeah. a fine it's a fine translation yeah. some scholars of, uh some scholars of the salaf even have, it, have translated it like that but the, the majority and i think al-tabar is one of them he says uh, we're in there the musiaun a in there la qadirun we are we're able to so so we have been we have built the universe with power and we have been able to do that we, we and we we are the able in being able to do that. So yeah, and, he, um, yeah, and both of those meanings are concurrent. Like this, you don't, one doesn't have to take one or the other. Like one can take both. But the problem now mm-hmm. is sama is ashbal min as samawat. It's it's more encompassing than the seven heavens. Yeah. I mean to man fi sama yaxifa bikum al adha fa idha fa idha hi tamur. You know the. Ah, yeah, this, so the, the word sama is actually more encompassing than the word samawat. Yep. Well, samawat means meaning seven heaven because the word sama in the books of uh, in the dictionaries, in Arabic dictionaries, like Lisan al Arab and Mufatat al Quran and all these kind of things, means so, whatever is above us is sama. So this includes the arsh, even includes the uh, kursi. Yeah. So if they're saying that I mean to Memphis sama. Uh, sorry, if they're saying that that the heaven we have created with power and the, we are expanding it, if they're saying that it's talking about the universe expanding, but yeah, I mean, this could mean all seven heavens and the arsh and the kursi because it's not just sama dunya. Sama dunya, walaqad zayyana sama dunya bi masabih wa ja'alnaha rujuman li shayateen. The sama dunya we know is the first heaven and we know that it's the universe. The scholar says the universe, sama dunya, because <laughs> it's anything which is adorned with anything which is adorned with stars is sama dunya, and so uh, sama is more encompassing than even the seven heavens. I find that one difficult because if you say, well, this is talking about the expansion of the universe and not shift, um, you know, I don't even think that's concurrent too much. Uh, with the what's happening at the red shift, red shift because it's, it could be talking about all of the seven heavens plus the arch plus the kursi yeah so it's a difficult one to say well this is talking about it as for the one that in total ambia you know uh that he's made the heavens and the earth that do not, not the unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth were one piece and then we have separated them and we have made from what every living thing in in chapter 21 verse 30 uh this probably mentions four different opinions and uh how it happens is it connected like that and it you know is it like this is it yeah i mean this one is more plausible to be completely fair and it's not completely not concurrent with the big bang but once again, you have the same issue because there's more than one heaven here. And we said uh, it's not just Sama'at Dunya. Sama'at Dunya. It's, it's all the seven heavens. Something's happening to all of them, which goes into Ghaib discussion for us because we don't know anything about the other six heavens. So uh, we know that we're in the first of six, seven heavens. So how is all this happening? We don't know, Allah Alam. You know, mm. we, 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 well, it's mutashabihat. Clearly, these are verses are mutashabihat. Clearly, these yeah. are ambiguous verses. And so, to input, like you said, to input one, yani, this is what it means, and that's difficult. It's that's, it's it's essentially. A and, and one more, so, so one more yeah. thing on this. Yeah. And on the other hand, just as we're doing it, they can do it as well. The the the, the enemies of Islam. Oh yes, yes. They'll, they'll bring point. an unscientific point and say, "Well, look, Tabari says this, or, or this person Al Qurtubi th- yeah. th- thought the Earth was flat. Whatever, yani, whatever you want to say, yeah? yeah, no problem. You can. You, but what Hamza also mentions, and what is I think the narrative of Sapiens, and I think it's a very good point, is that this is this is where the miracle is. That the ayat tahtamilu ta'wil, basically yes, that. Yes. That, that it's ambiguous enough to allow for the scientific meaning, so-called, or the ones which are most prominent scientific meanings, and the unscientific one, which means whereas the biblical ones they don't lay a tablet 
So the biblical verses, there's no verse in the Bible mm. from beginning to end that indicates the rotundity of the earth. None of them. Yeah. Where the Quran does have verses that indicate to the rotundity of the earth. Yeah. But it's not saying for a fact this means this and this. We're not inputting it like that. Yeah. I think that's the, the balanced and correct approach on these matters. Absolutely. So yeah. Jazakallah khair, brother Uthman, um, for joining the live stream. So are you about to okay. say something? Yeah, uh, just something quick. Um, I understand the the in instrumentalist approach, um, but earlier you said that you could also use a realist approach. But just um, it's just that I'm thinking if I use a realist approach and then I come across something in the Quran that contradicts modern scientific uh, discoveries, wouldn't that be a problem for me? It wouldn't be a problem because a realist or an instrumentalist approach, and remember, realism and instrumentalism are two broad schools of thought, and within them you have sub-schools, and you have people who are sort of getting in the, uh, they're taking a bit of both. Um, it wouldn't because a realist camp would not say, uh, sorry, a commitment to realism uh, uh, within the philosophy of science would not mean that you are subscribing to the idea that science is absolute. So it has no link, whether you're an instrumentalist or a realist, it does not mean your commitment, your epistemic commitment to the absolute certainty of science. It has nothing to do with that. So you can be a happy realist, a happy instrumentalist, and still believe that science doesn't give certainty. Science only gives instrumentally useful theories or theories that describe the state of affairs, but they can always be overturned. That commitment does not actually, from my understanding, um, have uh, any uh, strong uh, backing uh, philosophically and it's, it's not something that you, you automatically commit to if you actually commit to the school of thought known as realism okay thank you very much for answering my question Jazak